that these uh, or uh, ye shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. And if you've followed this man of God at all, you'll see lots of miraculous fruit hanging on his tree. And it doesn't make him better. It just means that God has used him in the realm, in this, in this realm. And, and I'm so thankful for it. But the Bible says in Mark 6, 16, it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. That's why I called him a believer. It says, in my name, everyone said in his name, shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That's by accident. And lastly, it says, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I'm so thankful we have believers amongst us. Are you a believer? That's my question for you tonight. Would you thank the Lord for the ministry of Brother Poe tonight as he takes over? In Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody say praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to get mine, whether you get yours or not. I don't like going to restaurants that run out of food. The other day I went to a, well, down south we have some steak places called Outback. I don't know, do y'all have them up here? You have them up here? And um, pretty big group. We'd been in revival and drunk in the Holy Ghost. So we're not acting normal. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I'm tired of normal Pentecostals. But anyway, and uh, we're having fun, and the kids order some stuff. And the pastor's wife, she got three or four kids, and one of them ordered mac and cheese, macaroni. The waitress comes back and says, we're out. And I thought, how can a restaurant be out of macaroni they sell it right down the street if you know you're running low just go to the store she walked by me and I said I'd like to get this uh, pork chop now if y'all don't like pork chops that's fine with me the more less y'all eat the more there is for me people say I don't like pork that's a good fine hallelujah praise God love bacon and uh, amen she said come back a little later she said we're out and I said no wait a minute the kid ain't gonna eat because you're out of mac and cheese I'm not gonna get to eat because you're out of pork chops Tell, why don't, is it easier for me to just listen to what you have or do I need to go down the list and so I like to go to church where I know that they're not out. Where they're not out. Hallelujah. Thank you for the invitation and all of you that are here. If you've never heard me preach, I'm a lot different. Of course, probably every preacher says that. One time they introduced me like this. It's this big old meeting. Here, fixing to introduce Brother Poe. I grab my Bible. The guy goes, you either love him or hate him. Then turn around, preach, preacher. It's like, wow, okay, you divided the crowd in half right then. I didn't even get to preach anything. Am I already divided? But I preach different because I am different. I wasn't born and bred Pentecostal. I used to be a drug dealer. Uh, lived in prisons, jails ran from the cops, imported and exported. White men can jump. I can leap over eight foot walls. Used to be able to leap over eight foot fences in a single bound. And then the Holy Ghost got me. And I can still jump a little at my age, at least I raised my feet high. So we're here to 
witness to the Word of God and then hopefully we'll be able to allow the Holy Ghost to move. So please just bear with me tonight. I want to read from the book of 2 Peter, the first chapter. Peter's writing a letter here in verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, or yea, I think it necessary, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you into remembrance, by stirring you up. I'm going to stir you up by making you remember. Amen. Everybody said amen. You may be seated. When I got the Holy Ghost, it's kind of a strange happening. My mother literally started churches, and my grandmother, both of them together, and, and uh, the church there in Longview, Texas right now, is one of them is started in my mother's home. Uh, I left home at about 14. My mom says 14. Daddy says, or was said, both of them are past 15. And I began a journey uh, through crime uh, that took me very, very far. I was homeless before it was popular. We didn't have cardboard signs. We were stealing for food. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you can't laugh, then you'll get with me in just a minute because I'll have fun in church. I lived in jail. That wasn't fun. Uh, so I went through a lot of crime. I was a long-haired hippie, very long hair. <laughs> I played in rock and roll bands for many years, played 11 different instruments. I wore more gold than Mr. T. In fact, my first few offerings in the church was just gold. <laughs> and um, so I wasn't really into church. My mom was. My brother played in the rock and roll bands with me through the 80s. He got the Holy Ghost. I was there the night he went to the altar. We were both there with mother for some reason. I can't really remember, but. He looked around at me and he said, hey, man, I, I got to go to the altar. And I looked at him. I was like, what? And uh, we got a joint we're fixing. Y'all don't act like that. Y'all used to do the same stuff. <laughs> Y'all all acting like, oh, my God, I can't believe he said the word grass in church. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, so he went down to the altar and I was standing there, and Brother Weaver, one of the ushers, came up to me and said, Would you like to go pray? I said, No, not me. I got to get on the rock and roll circuit here in a few days. And I said, I, He said, Well, your brother's down there praying. I said, Well, that's all right. I left, and I didn't see my brother for probably 10 years. I left my family. And uh, so when I would go to church after they found me, I, I didn't have any communications with them for many, many years. And um, after they found me, then Mama convinced me to go to church on Mother's Day, Easter, and Christmas. That's my thing, you know, because they don't preach nothing. <laughs> Safe church. Mother's Day, she got the most the biggest present for having the most kids and then Easter everybody that comes on Easter knows they really believe that he was resurrected they just don't believe in hell 
If they did, they'd be back the next Sunday. Uh, <laughs> you'll get that one tomorrow and spit your teeth all the way across the building. And, and, and so I'd go then because they preached the same thing. You know, he got up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, right. And uh, they'd have dramas and singing and it's safe. You know, lights are out. You know, <laughs> I had a lot of sleep during them dramas. And uh, then at Christmas I would go because, uh, you know, he was born. And everybody there at Christmas, they, they all did that same thing. I could say they all preached the same message. They all sang the same choir songs. So it was just like, ah, I feel good about that. I went three times in one year. And uh, so I got the Holy Ghost by my little sister. My little sister, I didn't know her. Actually, I'd been gone from home longer than 10, to come to think of it, because I left. Well, it was about 10, because I left when she was 2. And uh, so she invited me to church. Well, I didn't know her. And uh, she said these words, Gordon, you've never done anything for me. I'm like, I don't even know you, you know. <laughs> so uh, I'm just not in the habit of going, oh, let me go do something for somebody I don't know. And so I said, well, what do you want me to do? She said, I want you to come to church. I said, you could have asked me for money, but not. I ain't going up there and do all that. Listen, they look at my hair, and uh, she goes, no, no, no. And I was in there scream and holler. And I, she said, no, the preacher just tells stories. And I was like, oh, like an Easter deal. <laughs> and I was going, oh, okay, well, we'll go up there again. I mean, if y'all do that four times a year, okay, that's fine with me. And uh, I walked in the back, and sure enough, here's this low-sounding man walking around telling stories. And I'm sitting there thinking, where am I going to sell the next load of cocaine? And That's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, some of y'all that had never been anything but Pentecost, <laughs> y'all are getting very few. Y'all are the minority now. There's more of us in the church. <laughs> <laughs> Now you can't ask. All right, everybody's been out in the world, stand. There'd be two people sitting down. <laughs> and um, so he, I leave, and it was low-key, altar call. I walked out. She calls me up again, says, Gordon, would you come back? And I'm thinking, yeah, I, I'm pretty nice stories, you know. I, that's good for me. Do something for my sister and my mother. And so I slipped in the back, and the dude's preaching when I say the word dude, I'm not disrespectful. It's just I still have some his, uh, vocabulary from the hip, hippie days, you know what I mean? And I didn't go to Bible college. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy's walking over this way, and he's looking at that wall, and, I'm, and he's looking at it real strange, and I have started looking at it like, man, what is the guy looking at over there? I start leaning into it, and he said, oh, you're back. And I went, I'm back. Oh, no, that's not a gospel song. And <laughs> some of y'all wanted to cross yourselves, right, when I did that. I was like, I, and um, I said, I'm, who? he said, you were here two weeks ago, and the Lord told me to tell you something. I failed to do that. Ask God to let me see you again to bring you back, and now you're here. And I was like, oh, wow, he saw all that on that wall? <laughs> you know, I, I thought, man, that dude's doing some stuff. I got out in the car. <laughs> you know, I didn't know nothing about this. And Mama, you know, Mama, I was scared of Mama because she'd say, son, I was praying last night, and the Lord showed me. I said, like, oh, the, you know, so you didn't, didn't want to talk to her too long. And... uh <laughs> So, <laughs> some of y'all ain't smiled. It was a while ago when you smiled, your face said, I can't. And, and so um, he turns around, and we had about 750 that night, and he turns around and he goes, you're back over there. Well, there was maybe 300 people back over there. And I'm going, somebody's going to get hammered. And he goes, in the back, 
And I turned around like, I don't think but three rows behind me. And I turned around. He said, you just turned your head. And I turned back around. I said, me? He said, yeah. The Lord told me to tell you, you have a short time to live that you've run from him since she was a teenager and your time is gone. You've lived in the jails. In fact, you're a musician. And he just began to tell me, my mother didn't even know I was in the service. And she turns around to look and there I am. And that's how I got the Holy Ghost. Three, two or three pews out and then I took that long walk, you know, how the church gets bigger when you're coming to the altar. You know what I'm saying? Y'all remember that? It's like that door ain't that far away. But then you start walking down this way, it's like a long and winding. And so I stood up to leave because I ain't no dude going to talk to me that way. See, I was a real bad person, mean. I was... Everybody in that county, they still tell stories. I mean, that's sad, but they do. In fact, people up here told me stories that happened down there, and I didn't even know the people up here in Chicago. I'm like, dude, do I owe you? I've had the Holy Ghost a long time, okay? (laughs) And so I stood up, and my boots caught on fire. I looked down. And it literally felt like both boots caught on fire. I pulled pull my feet up just like that. And I was like, my Lord. And uh, so I, it dawned on me that in the spirit somehow I was hanging over hell. And that I needed to put that fire out. And so I came this way and instead of going that way. And so I came right over here. And uh, didn't know exactly what mama had. I just knew that she had a prayer life. And so I'm a hippie, a drug dealer, rocker. And I raised my hands and I started praying. And uh, the Pentecostals came. And you know, it's so proverbial. Pour your heart out. The guy on the other side is on saying something like, tell God all about it. And so I thought that's what they meant for me to do. So I started saying, God, I left home at 15. <laughs> I was dealing whiskey to dry counties in Russ County by the time I was 16. And God caught. I thought you had to go down this list. And so I started going down the list. And I can see y'all are leaning into it. Tell me more. Focus prayer group. And <laughs> tell us what we need to focus on. And I can't stand that. And it's like if you're praying, you got to focus, okay? I mean, you cannot pray without focusing. It's like, oh, you can't? No, no, you can't. And so I begin to talk and tell. God, when I was 16, I was put in the Greg County Jail. When I was 16, I got put in the city jail. When I, and I was going down there, and, and Bob Eddy, this is one of the men that's on my right. Now, I knew I didn't know him then. He's going, go on with it. Tell, tell God all that. And I'm like, all right, we'll be here a while. <laughs> and I started just telling the Lord all this stuff. And, and I didn't know, you know, I could just, now it's kind of funny because I'm just serious. I'm like, Oh, and when I was 18, I shot the rear admiral's boat over there in Charleston, Lake, Charleston, South Carolina, and sunk the boat. And I was like, what? <laughs> and robbed those people out there in South Carolina. And, and then pretty soon I get up to 21, and Brother Johnson says, <clears throat> excuse me, son, just tell God and everything else. <laughs> and I opened my eyes, and I said, we, we, we're not finished. He said, just tell him everything else. He said, there's policemen that go to this church. <laughs> and uh, so I get the Holy Ghost. And I turned around, and I was so happy. You know, when you get the Holy Ghost, you turn around, and everybody wants to hug and kiss and all that stuff. 
You know what I mean? When, if you get the Holy Ghost, you're happy. You, you can't have the Holy Ghost and not be happy. That's an impossibility. You can't turn around and go, oh. <laughs> you cannot do that. It's not because the Holy Ghost is joy. You turn around and you're happy about it. You're like, wow. <laughs> Man. In fact, I was so happy, I turned around and went, what a rush. <laughs> yeah, just like, and I'm talking about in the 80s now, the Pentecostals didn't even know what that meant. Well, there's a Russian mighty wind we know about. <laughs> I'll just hold on. We're going somewhere. And uh, and then everybody wanted to hug and kiss. You know, all the little widow ladies ain't been kissed in 20 years. They all line up. Somebody got the Holy Ghost. You know, look. It's like, oh, my God, we get a kiss tonight. <laughs> what was bad is I was kissing them. Oh, yeah. The next night, I was like, oh, my God, I kissed that woman over there. <laughs> you going to get the Holy Ghost again tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, it's pretty weird. I didn't want to sit on certain sides of the church for a while, but what struck me was that in these people's worship, it was pretty radical. It was a lot of hollering and and uh, jumping and clapping their hands and the preacher man I was so excited it was in a sixteen week revival and uh, I was excited about having the Holy Ghost. Uh, in fact, one of the times he screamed out, "I just want somebody to let out a yell for the Lord." I just leaped out of my chair. Ah! <laughs> Ain't nobody in that church ever heard that. And it was like everybody's like, what? What? And I was like Thought that was pretty good, man. I was like, yeah. Of course they were all like, oh my God, I can't, I cannot believe that. One lady told me, Brother Poe, we love you around here, but we're gonna pray that rock and roll right out of you. <laughs> I was very bold and crude back in those days. And I just told her, well, if I wind up like you, quit praying. Because I hadn't seen you do anything in four months. Don't pray for me if you can't be in the altar or run the aisles or shout. Don't, don't pray for me. Just leave me alone. I'm going to get freaky. I'm going to get wild. I'm going to mess up your day and so I began to see things happen that my mother had always said happened in the Bible like one night a little boy that couldn't walk he pushed himself on his feet uh, on his hands pastor's right here I'm right here about 11 o'clock at night Little boy's pushing his self down the aisle backwards. Mother's right here, sobering service. Suddenly, little boy spins around, stands up, walks over to his mother, pulls on her dress, and I said, Pastor, did you see what happened? He said, No, what happened? I said, Look at that little boy. He's standing and walking. So I realized that. What, the, what my mother said happened in the old days still happened. It just depended on where you were at. It depended on the power that was in the building. It depended upon the faith that was in the building. So I became intrigued with this stuff, this power that could make Jared, his name is Jared, he's about 24 years old now, married, make him going from being absolutely crippled with no movement of his legs at all, and in one service, one spin, step up, walk to his mother. Who taught him to walk? And now he's a young man 
happily married. What did that? So I decided to find out how to, to get in touch with this power that could not only take a drug dealer or drug user uh, out of that environment. I never went to AA or any drug rehab. I got the Holy Ghost and it just... I never did a line of cocaine ever again. Of course, I wanted out of it. It wasn't like I was just like, hey, I want to go to church, but on Monday I'm going to do some rails. I want it out. I got stabbed, shot. Everybody in the gang I ran with is dead, period. They're all gone. I, I didn't want to buy... I didn't want. To, I wanted out for it was my time, and uh, so now I see this this power that swept through the church when people were worshiping and praying, and that was more intriguing to me than going to a nightclub. See, people in a nightclub all have the same problem. All of them have the same problem. They they don't like themselves or nobody else. You can't marry nobody in a nightclub. I mean, probably one or two do successfully, but think about it. Everybody there ain't got nobody. That means the girl at Walmart going, no, I ain't going out with you. Go on to the club, get you somebody. The girl down there selling the clothes or at the mall looking at the guy, hey, you want to go out? Mm, no. <laughs> but there's a bunch of people like you down at the nightclub. <laughs> Yeah, y'all get that one tomorrow. But that's where I live because that's where all of us hung out. Amen. Whoo, that kind of got quiet. It's like, Brother Paul, you're bringing up my past. <laughs> you're calling me a loser. I, I just said I was. And hanging around with a, with a and him fed up. But this power showed up nearly every service. In fact, the preacher said, hey, I'll tell you what we're going to do. There's so many miracles happening, we just need to start hanging stuff on the wall. As a reminder, because it's easy to forget what God has done in the past if, he, if you ain't seeing it in the present. It's easy to talk about, but are we seeing what he did? And so I began to study history, and I found out that there were many services where, let me give you one instance, horse-drawn ambulances lined up one mile end to end, one mile. Every one of them had somebody in it that had a problem. But when they left the revival, tent revival, not one person was in any of the ambulances. Look at your neighbor and say, that can happen today. Do you believe that the same Jesus that healed every one of those people could heal people in this building? Why don't you just stand and give him a little hand clap right now? Because I believe the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, man. You may be seated. And so, so I begin to read history and realize that my dad being a preacher. <gasps> what? Yeah. There was two of me. I talked to myself. Y'all won't talk to me. I'll just laugh at my own joke. And um, <laughs> that I saw this stuff when I was young and didn't realize what I was seeing. And so it started me asking mom more questions. Like, mom, the time that, see, back in the old days, they didn't have heaters in the batteries. My daddy built a six-inch pipe, burner on the bottom, came up through the floor, in through the baptistry, so the pipe got hot. 
and it warmed the water in the baptistry. If we'd have just known that would have caught on, we could have been wealthy. But daddy's just like, huh, people are complaining about the cold water. And I was too young to know I could have made money off of it. I made money off their hairdos. The, back in the days, that ladies would, I don't know what you call it, but they'd save the hair that was in the brush and they would put it like a rat right here. They'd just ball it up and then put it right here and they'd swirl their hair around it. They'd get to shouting, it'd fall out. I'd grab them, <laughs> sell them back to them in a the garage sale. <laughs> I was making, how many of you ladies remember? Can anybody here remember that time? when A few of you, it's like, we, we, Issy Hudson go, I done bought this thing three times. <laughs> Yeah, I, was, I had to make money. And uh, so this lady, he would always say, don't, when you come out of the water, do not touch the pipe. It's boiling water, red, boiling water all around it. This lady came up. Of course, the kids would all gather around, came up, started shouting. First thing she did was reach and grab the pipe. I remember the smell. I remember the sound. It just is like this. And instead, my daddy grabbed her hand, jerked it up, and said, in the name of Jesus, stuck it down in that water, and there was not one blister on that lady's hand when he brought it up out of the water. If Jesus can do that in the 60s, because the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I still believe he's the same today as he was back then. Is there anybody in this house believes that with me? Somebody scream, he can do it. Shake your neighbor, say, he can do that. You, you can be seated. Let me, let me get, go a little further. So... It reminded me that Sylvia Latta, 28 years old, never walked. When she's dying, daddy takes me to the hospital. My dad was not a professional preacher. He was just a preacher. He had powerful, simple faith. I didn't realize what he had as a kid. He, he wasn't polished. He was a professional boxer, boxed 28 professional fights, lost one. He was also a race car driver, loved to drive the oval dirt tracks. My grandfather was very, very wealthy. And, uh, but when Daddy became a preacher, my grandfather cut him off of all funds, period. So Dad's got this great faith. And uh, he goes to the hospital. Here's what he said. Never forget it. He said, I want you to go to the hospital. I went, boy, we walked by the waiting room. I said, Dad, what are all them people? He said, boy, I'll take a good look in there. And I looked. And everybody's waving at the little boy. He said, you know what's going on in there, son? I said, no, sir. He said, nothing. They're all waiting. That's why it's called a waiting room. They're all waiting for news. They expect bad news. That's why it's quiet in there. Come on. So we walk into this woman's room. You got to remember, no computers, none of that. All I can remember, folk, is that where her legs were supposed to be, the sheets were just laying there. So instead of having a big old leg, it was just a little bitty and then some feet. And I was like, what's wrong with her? Where's her legs? And so daddy goes up to her and he says, Sylvia, been trying to get you to come to church ever since I come to Carlisle, town of 300. You won't show up. Now you're dying. And you want the preacher. So you want me to pray? He said, all right. God, Sylvia's dying. If, uh, if you'll listen to me, Sylvia, will you be at church Sunday? Sylvia. He said, all right, God. 
If she's telling the truth, raise her up. If she's not, let her go. Now, you know, to the Pentecostals nowadays, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> he really did not go to Bible college. He would have known <laughs> that you're supposed to be sympathetic instead of powerful. He said, come on, boy, let's go. Hope to see you in church Sunday. <laughs> we walk out, get in the car. I said, Daddy, where was her legs? He said, son, she ain't never walked. She don't have any muscles. She has nothing but just bones there. I said, you think she's coming to church? He said, I don't know. We'll see. Sunday, the back door opened up. Here come a wheelchair. She must have been telling the truth. God raised her up, but it wasn't over because about three weeks later, my daddy's preaching, and now she's got, they're in a shotgun church. Her wheelchair's there. He said, hey, saints, this thing's been in our church for about three weeks now. He said, I'm getting a little tired of seeing a wheelchair in our church. I'm thinking, daddy, she just barely got out of the hospital, but not him. He said, you know what? If God can raise her up, he can raise her all the way up. <laughs> Honey, that night, that lady got up out of that wheelchair and walked to my father, which was standing right down here, never had taken a step in her life. You know what? He's the same yesterday and today. He can still do it today. Somebody give him some praise right now. I believe that. Somebody scream yes. yes. Shake your neighbor and say Jesus. Jesus. And so you can be seated. And, and so I began to remember these things. Mama would stir up our remembrance. She'd say, you remember the time that daddy, do you remember the time that your daddy, you remember, and it started a thing in me. It was like, man, as a kid, I didn't even know what was going on. I just thought it was normal. I didn't know it was special. I just thought, oh, my daddy can do these things. Well, all right. Good. You got a devil? Hey, you go see my dad. <laughs> Something wrong with your hand? Hey, you can go down there with my dad. Just thought it was normal. But now I'm in this modern church. Mm. And I, I think that the church I'm in now is the same copy, and it was. It was amazing. It was like, dude. So I didn't venture out because I was so mesmerized by all the power and the shouting. I remember the first time them boys took off running. I asked Mama, I said, cops, where, where, where are we running from? <laughs> I was ready to run, boy. I was like Jack Rat. Uh-oh. Now, y'all know, man, I see these guys running by me, my left, hey, 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 hey. What, what's going on? Baba said, they're running. I said, from who? From what? <laughs> because. I said, no, 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 that's not an answer. Well, they, because they love the Lord. I said, they can just run? Yeah. I said, oh, <laughs> okay. So I just took off running. I was waving at them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know now, you know, you preach a camp meeting and do that. It'd be like, oh, my God, I cannot believe it. Where's that in the book? This camp meeting is now about show and tell. Show what you got and tell them you got something more. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's like, I got some new shoes. I'm going to camp meeting. You know I'm telling you right. And so I ran the aisles and I jumped. I wanted, to, I wanted to get part of that healing stuff. I really wanted to, man. It was like, I'll freak out. I was like, man, can you? <laughs> Sis, I know you've been in there. <laughs> Sis done got up there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I saw you. 
<laughs> I seen that hand clap 25 years ago. And uh, <laughs> she ain't coming. She said, oh, Sunday, I ain't coming now. And <laughs> that's fun. I love it. And so I went to the hospital. And I'm thinking, they can't run from you. They're all hooked up. I'm just going to go in there and try it. Now, I didn't ask the preacher. I'm not at telling any of you young men to do this. You've got to figure, I've never been in a box, so I didn't come to Pentecost in the box, <laughs> so I was always out of the box. That's the reason I was always in the preacher's office. <laughs> and so I went to the hospital, and I'm thinking, man, this, this is where you practice because the preachers always go to the hospital. In my mind, I'm thinking, dude, that's what they're doing. They're going up there, and I can just go in there and practice. So I went there and got me some oil, just like I saw down here. Get me this oil thing, puck up in there, and I walk into these people like, hey, how you doing today? People on the respirators and all this stuff looking at me, hey, <laughs> my name's Gordon Poe. You ready to get out of here? <laughs> going to pray for you. <laughs> Take my oil out. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to put some oil on you. And the people, be, be. <laughs> that wasn't a morphine pump either, boy. That was, <laughs> you, you hear me? And the cops come in like, oh. God. Took me out that front door. Don't ever come back up here doing that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I went to Sunday. Told Tim, a friend of mine, I said, hey, man. I know, we're all, I know where we can practice. I said, I went up to the hospital, man. All them people up there are hooked up and see it. Man, we go. I said, here's what we got. We got to kind of trick the cops. I said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I go on the third floor. You go on the first floor. They can't get us both. <laughs> Somebody going to get healed, and then they won't mess with us no more. But. God didn't do that. So me and Tim met at the front door. <laughs> and then Sunday we met in the pastor's office. But I wasn't going to get discouraged. So I went to the black side of town. Because the white cops ain't coming over there. And we didn't have but three black cops. I dealt drugs on that side of town. I was a white guy, I could go over there. Then, <laughs> and so I went to the park, and I took my Fender Reverb amps, and I took some microphones, started setting up. They're smoking dope, drinking their be beer. I'm sitting out there going, play that book. Hello, Tess. Tess, can you hear me in the back? Play that book. Can you hear me in the back? Can, can you hear me on the other side? Play. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And they started gathering around. I play that funky music. Can you hear me in the back? Can, can you hear me? Can, can you hear me in the back? <laughs> see, I wanted to see healings. Now, I know that y'all would prefer a 12-week search for truth. But I was truth walking around. I made up my mind. I ain't got 12 weeks to convince you. I'm going to pray for you, and God's going to do something. I just believe it's going to happen. You got to have a mind made up that God is going to heal me, that God is going to deliver me, that God is going to answer my need. I don't care what the sun does. I don't care if it sets or goes up or down. I know my God is a prayer answering God. Somebody give him some praise right now. Somebody say yes, 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 yes. You can be seated. I'm, I'm trying to close. I'm, I'm trying to hurry. And, and so when the cops get there, they come in and tell me, you got a permit? And it was the people that said, leave that white boy alone. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're with black people, you try to talk black. I know where I'm at, okay, Chicago. 
And when, when they, they try to talk white, which I'm, a, I'm the only white guy in the park. I, I want to be incognito. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Leave white boy alone. Leave him. Leave him there. They're smoking. Y'all act like y'all ain't tell no jokes around. Oh, my God, we got to be politically correct now. You can't offend anybody. Well, if I just offended, you get an altar. It means you're sinning. You can't tell no jokes in church because everybody's got their little offensive spirits. Get over that mess. <laughs> Woo. Boy, don't get me started on that one. And so, and so, and so they leave me alone, and now everybody's going, you going to sing that song? I didn't even know a gospel song. I was got my guitar. I was like, "What? Well, well <laughs> yeah." <laughs> so I, I played and sang, "Play that funky music, white boy. Play that funky music now." <laughs> Woo! Aren't y'all glad I got the Holy Ghost? Woo! <laughs> Me can't got nothing on pole. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all don't shout in church. I might as well do something. <laughs> and then after that, I started talking to them about God. And all of a sudden, they started putting the cigarettes down. They started dropping the dope because I was stirring up their remembrance of what their mama had taught them. <laughs> and their mama had taught them about a one God, taught them about a healing God. Taught them about a saving God. Taught them about a delivering God. I'm here to stir somebody up tonight to remind you that there's a God that still heals. There's a God that still delivers. There's a God that still saves. There's a God that still does everything he's ever done. Somebody holler amen. You can be seated. Yes. But the world doesn't want us to experience, much less Satan. Because if we take the healing out of the church, then we're just a church instead of the, instead of his. If we decide that we can do without it, and survive, you can't. Nobody ever has. Nobody ever will. Because healing of a body is the testimony of a powerful Christ. It's the power that says, Poe can't do it, but God did it. So how can I argue with it? See, people could say, in fact, one time there was a blind girl there in Texas got healed. She couldn't see, in a wheelchair, hands crippled, prayed for her. I personally saw a light shoot by my eye and hit her. I took her glasses off to see if she was really blind. And a light hit her in her pupil, and out of that dark mass, a pupil sprang. Wham! I was the first thing she saw. I saw this streak of light. But then there were other people who went, well, were you blind? But see, she's been in a wheelchair, hands so God heals her out of the wheelchair. She stands up. She walks around. Mama had never been in Pentecost church. Now mama's screaming, what are they doing to my baby? I said, if you'll just be quiet, God will finish the work. But she had never been around it. So she's freaking out because the daughter is looking around screaming. See, blind people don't look around and go, my, my. So nice to see you. Wondering what you look like? That finger description was wrong. They just scream. It was like, ho, oh, hey, ho, oh, hey, hi, ho, ho, hey, ho, oh, 
And I go, come on, come on, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Now she's walking, oh, hey, hey, and her hands are out, oh. And the Holy Ghost said, tell her to take her braces off. I said, ushers, take the braces off of her hands. And the, the hands were out like this. The mama said, her hands, her hands will fall. There was those braces. I said, like, you just keep out of this. Because see, there's always somebody that can't even believe what they're seeing. You've got to go past that person and say, I don't care if you believe what you're seeing or not. I am experiencing a healing. I'm experiencing a miracle. I have a God-given right to experience all the glory and the power of the almighty God in this house. Shake your neighbor and say, that's me. Shake your neighbor and say, yes. We undid her hands and both of her hands sprang out. Her mother come running up there again and said, what is this? I said, if you didn't know what this was, why did you bring her here? You could have brought her to any church in this city, but instead you heard that there were some Pentecostal preachers holding a conference and you brought her here. You just didn't expect God to show up, but now that he did, raise your hands. God's about to give you the Holy Ghost. It wasn't but about 10 minutes. Both of those people are speaking in tongues. We baptize them in Jesus' name. I'm here to tell you tonight that same God is here in this house to do the same things that he's always done. Come on, give God a little clap right now. Clap your hands and magnify. Magnify him. Magnify him. Magnify him. I believe it. Look at your name and say, I believe it. Now, if God does not want to do that, why don't we have something in the Bible that tells us don't try it? One of my friends says, Poe, everybody you pray for gets healed? I said, nope. Really? Nope. What do you do? I go, next. I don't know what you have. I don't know if you want it. There's some people just like to get prayed for. They, they love it. They don't even have a wrinkle. It's prayer time. The elders are going to pray for people. <laughs> oh, God, help me. I was in one city in Texas. I better not name them since we're on the Internet now. People get crazy. Lady right over here, I'm sitting in the preacher's chairs over here. She comes up, the pastor, after church, after a service, an hour long, praying for people another hour. I was a lot younger. I was just wore down bad. And I'm sitting there going, oh, God, I don't know if I can get up. I'm just tired. Pastor comes over and says, Brother Poe, yes. He said, this little lady would like for you to pray for her. I hate to ask you. I said, then don't. He went, well, wait a minute. She wants you to pray. I said, Poe, I've been praying for people for an hour. Did I miss her? Well, no. I said, okay. I ain't praying for nobody else tonight. I'm tired. He went, well, well, Brother Poe, we preachers, we, I said, we don't do tricks. Tricks are for kids. <laughs> Y'all can tell now, that man did not go to Bible college. And so she looked at me real funny. He goes, well, let me tell you your story. I said, I don't need no story. It ain't going to change me. I'm tired, Bo, tired. He goes, she's dying of cancer. I said, well, she should have been in the altar. Love her. What am I going to do? I looked at her and said, ma'am, you want to die? No. I said, then why didn't you come to the altar? Well, I, I thought maybe we could do it in private. I said, what, what, what made you think that? What did I preach tonight that made you think that? I don't pray people in behind closed doors. I ain't afraid of it. Ain't nothing secret. I'm going to throw God all over you and see what he does. 
That's the way we do it. Now, I, was, I, I hadn't had a holy God. I hadn't been preaching about four or five years, you know. So then I thought you just stole God on them, you know. And uh, next night, same thing. Sitting right over there. Here she comes, Pastor. Brother Poe, uh, I, I know we've talked about it today, but would you reconsider? I said, no, I won't. He goes, Brother Poe, this is really serious. He said, listen, she has two babies. She's totally eaten up with cancer. And the boys are both twins, six years old, and we're already locating them a home. I mean, she has less than six weeks to live. I said, hey, Bo, listen to me. I, I feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for her. I, I understand. I mean, but the deal is, if you are too embarrassed to come up here, then that means one or two things to me. Either you are embarrassed to get seen praying for, or you think you're special. And she ain't neither one. He went, my God, Brother Poe, that sounds hard. I said, not hard as enough, not as hard as you're going to have to bury her. Because she could have been healed. And he said, well, would you go tell her that? And I walked down there, and I said, ma'am, here's the way it works. If you don't want a healing, then you don't need to come to me. If you want prayer, go to the prayer meeting. Y'all can pray for each other, bow your head, do whatever y'all got to do. I'm not in this to mess around. If you want to be healed, then you got to get up here with everybody else because you got problems just like everybody else, and God will heal you just like everybody else. But that's not my decision. My decision is to allow you the opportunity. Your decision is to take charge of it. So I'm going to try it again tomorrow night, and then it's up to you. The next night, she comes running up to the front. Couldn't really run, but kind of trotted to the front. And I leaped out there, and I began to curse cancer. That was on a Sunday, uh, I mean, on a Tuesday night. The next Sunday, now she's only got four weeks to live. The next Sunday, there's a lady sitting back here, jumping up and down, waving her hands. Pastor says, hey, we need to show you something. I said, what is it? They flashed it on the screen. She has no cancer in her body at all. She went from dying in six weeks to living because there was somebody that said, God's going to heal you tonight. You just got to take a hold of that healing. You got to want it. You got to want it. You got to want it. Look at your neighbor and say, I believe that. Look at your neighbor and say, I believe that. Be seated one last time. Let me, let me close. I got to hurry up and close. I'm trying to lay some foundation. Only got three nights, two nights now. The enemy tries to dilute or kill our faith. There are different levels of faith. Not everybody's on the same level. Even the disciples, Lord, increase our faith, meaning what we see, what we've done is not enough. So how do you get more? We know in the scripture there's several ways, but I won't go through them. So your faith creates an avenue so the enemy knows that if I can kill their faith, they accept less. If I can kill their faith, I can accept less. Because instead of striving, pushing, demanding, I will say, well, I guess God didn't want me to be healed. I hold it. You can't say that, people, because he took stripes. So for us to say that, and I'm going I'm to qualify all this, for us to say that, that means really I'm going to sit here, and if I get healed, that was God's will. But if I don't, I guess I'm not in God's will because the will is his Bible. So you're putting words in his mouth that he did not say. The enemy dilutes our faith because we're always looking to the weakest link to figure out how to justify little faith. Justify low faith to no faith. So if I can justify the little amount of faith that I have, then that allows me to continue to come to church to feel comfortable 
by not receiving what I claim I want, but I just don't want it bad enough to demand it from my faith. And so the enemy knows to dilute our faith, to kill our faith, to destroy our faith, that that is the key. That is the unlocking of the spiritual kingdom. If he can kill that faith, you cannot not unlock that spiritual kingdom. You can't exercise your rights as a child of God except by faith. And so therefore the enemy comes in and he destroys the church's faith because he knows if I can destroy them, they become a one-dimensional church and they're satisfied with one getting the Holy Ghost every Easter. So instead of us, and I know this is a long service, but I'm laying some foundation here. Instead of us being excited about having thousands and hundreds get the Holy Ghost, now we've been reduced to one, two, and the enemy's going, I don't care. Y'all live in Chicago. There's three million people up here. You get one or two. I don't care. Because when the Holy Ghost was poured out in Chicago, thousands were getting healed. Read your history. When they kicked him out, part them, Al Capone came in. Same place, every place across the nation where there was great healings. As soon as the people rose up about these people, God removed them and crime came in. And Chicago has never been the same. So now we're fighting not an awesome demonstration to where the Holy Ghost has so much power that it has liberty. Now we're fighting a cloud that has learned how to control this metropolis area and allow a little sprinkle in three million people. Then that's not what that's not God's will. That can't be God's will. Because Jesus would go up to cities. And the Bible says, how many of you believe the Bible? It said he turned the city upside down. And they got so ticked off that they threw dirt in the air at each other. That's pretty bad. The reason they got ticked off is because so many people getting healed, it drained all the churches. The reason they hated Jesus was not because he healed people. They were losing money because he was healing people. There was nobody going to their churches anymore. Like, what happened to our crowd? Oh, they're over there following Jesus. Well, what about our money? Well, they're just following Jesus. So you got to kill Jesus to get back religion. And as long as we accept religion, healing's not very much part of that. Now, that's sobering, but that's the way it is. That's the reason when you feel the goose bump in church, you don't need to ignore it. When you, you, you know, let me just, I got to close. I can just, I can feel it's happening. But listen, when the Holy Ghost, everybody says is a gentleman. I've heard this all my life. I'm like, the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Really? Jesus beat people with a whip. Now, I'm a gentleman. Hope that didn't hurt. I'm sorry I'm hitting you. That's not too gentle. We don't hit our wife, you know. So, so it depended on the situation. He was a gentleman when he found a woman that was accused of adultery. He was angry when religious people started messing with him. Yeah. And so now we, we've learned how to accept little and call it much. Now, y'all don't have Bluebell up here, do you? Bluebell? Oh, God. Whew. Okay. Get online. And look at the word bluebell, bluebell, ice cream. It will make a tadpole slap a whale. <laughs> it, it's, the best, it's the best ice cream if you ever eat it. I have friends in California ask me, will you just send this to us? You know, Now they've got some out there. Bluebell is rich. It's, y'all have Walmart, right? Okay, you know, I love birthday parties and everything, but I don't, when the kids, grandkids and kids and all that stuff come to my house, they don't get Bluebell. They get that Walmart tub. 
$2 for five gallons, you know. It's the stuff that the cow said, I don't know what is going on here. <laughs> but I like bluebell. I eat bluebell. And I don't eat just a little bitty cup. I have what I call a man bowl. <laughs> yeah. You don't ever know when the Lord's going to come. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I ain't seen scripture that it's up there, so I'm going to get it right here. And so nearly every night, I get bluebell. I went to a place that literally did this. They said, Brother Paul, we heard you like bluebell. I said, I'm addicted to it. I quit cocaine but took up bluebell. <laughs> but <laughs> and if I could snort it, <laughs> and... <laughs> Not really. This sounded good for a second. And, <laughs> and so the lady, she's one of these, and I, you know, if this is the way you are at your house, that's your business, but she's one of these real, real foo-foo ladies, you know, the, everything was real pretty and beautiful, like my wife is very clean, neat, and all that stuff. I'm, a, I'm an East Texas redneck. You know, I like plastic cups. I don't like little bitty cups where you got to go back and go back and go back. I don't like all that. I want some styrofoam jug fine with me, you know. And, and so she comes out, and we're sitting at this mahogany table, and, and I already see there's more gold and silver on the plates. And, the, and I mean, they better be glad I had the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you that right now because there were some knives that would have been missing that night. And uh, they sit down, and, and uh, she says, you know, we ate a steak, all this nice. Food. And then she comes out, and she says, well, we got you some bluebell. I went, oh, thank you, Jesus. Because they were the kind of people that they, they thought – they really believed those fairy tales about only serve what can go in the palm of your hand. Like that's the littlest cow that ever died. It was, it was just like, this sucker was an anorexic cow. I didn't even know they had one. And so I was eating, and I was eating, and it's like I was trying to be nice and eat, you know, look over there to see what spoon, why you want to put two spoons, I have no idea. And, and so I'm looking, and I'm doing everything I think correct. And then they bring out this little cup thing, and she goes, and she thought she was doing great. She went out, and she smiled, and she says, Brother Paul, we got you some bluebell. And she set it down. I was like, oh, that's, oh, nice. That's, 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 and she said, we heard you like chocolate syrup on your bluebell. I said, yes, I do, I do, I do. And she went like this, I was like, and I mean, the thing was this tall, and I was like, this, this right here ain't gonna be satisfied with that. I'm telling you, right now. and uh, this used to be my chest, but, and <laughs> one day I got up and just said, I quit. I said, okay, and so, folks, I, I started eating it, and they they had you know and they had the gold spoons and all this, and I'm thinking, okay, 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 and pretty soon, I'm, I mean, it didn't take no time, brother, and my, I'm, I'm clanking the bottom, and they go, Brother Poe, would you like some more? Now, the bowl, folk, was about this big, maybe about this big around, the little bitty thing, and I went, well, well sister, I, I can get it, I can get it. <laughs> you don't have to get up, and she says, okay, what's in the kitchen, and I went in the kitchen, and Opened up the ice box and there it was, vanilla bluebell. And I was like, oh Lord. I took the top off. It's about half gone. I was like, oh yes, that's what I'm talking about. Got the got the chocolate syrup out. I found a big old plastic bowl about this big. And I reached in the drawer. I reached in and got a spatula and I stuck it in there and I did like this and it broke. Now, I thought it was steel. It actually was pewter. I didn't know the difference. I just knew you couldn't sell that stuff when I was stealing. And so it broke, and I'm like, oh, my God. So I did a gentlemanly thing. I took it out, washed it off, put it back in there, <laughs> laid it down, closed the drawer, looked over there and said, Lord, what am I going to do? And I just took that chocolate syrup, and I just squirted it all in there. And I walked back in, and the pastor said, my Lord, you didn't leave anything for anybody else? I said, if you don't want it, don't ever serve me a little of something you got a whole bunch of. 
He said, are you going to eat that whole half gallon? I said, that ain't a half a gallon. It's a quarter of a gallon. <laughs> but I am going to eat it all. I'm going to eat it while y'all talking your foo-foo talk. I'm going to eat it until it's all gone. Because the next time I come to your house and y'all got bluebell, you're going to know to get me one. <laughs> Yet we're satisfied to come to the altar and get a few words. So let me just share with you what I've talked talk about in our close. Watch this. The Holy Ghost has never really come to the church and just started drop kicking people like, I'll tell you right now, you're going to praise me. Spam. And, and he jumps out of the field. And then, yes, you're going to go out. And it's ping, ping, pong, ping, 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 pong, ping, pong, 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 what he does is he walks through the church and he says, hey, you got a little bit of faith and just, and you feel that little whoo, like, man, I ought to run, but man, I ought to just stand up and holler hallelujah, but my God, what would they think? Somebody just, oh, I think I'll just stand and clap my hands and holler hallelujah right now, but ooh, man. And the Holy Ghost does like that. It just, just that little, bzz, bzz, praise me. And you go, oh, oh, oh Lord, have mercy. Uh, oh. And it's like, oh, okay, if you don't want to, I'll go over here. I'll go over here. And I'll go over here. I'll go over here. And there'll be one or two that'll praise me. And they're always looking weird because the rest of the church is thinking, wonder what they felt to make them get up and go crazy. It was just that little, bzz. one lady described it like this, and we'll close. She said, Brother Poe, you've preached here for 16 weeks, and you've got this church so messed up. She said, people falling out, people laughing in the altar, people running and jumping and you know, we don't do things around here in the flesh. It's got to be the spirit. And I said, really? You don't do anything in the flesh? Absolutely not. I said, I can't tell. Because you can't ever do with anything in the spirit until you start the flesh. You got to make that old flesh stand up and holler, hallelujah! You got to make that flesh start clapping its hands. And then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost says, hey, now I can use that right there. If you'll conquer the flesh, I am the spirit and I will heal your bodies. If you'll worship me like I am God, then I'll heal your sicknesses. Just remain standing. Everybody say yes. Now, I'm trying to take it easy on y'all tonight, first night. But here's what we're going to do. We don't need no music band. I'm, I don't use music. Thank you, God bless you. You can, my revivals, everybody gets the Holy Ghost. I love them. I love musicians, but like I told Pastor Book of Acts, never even had a praise team. It's amazing how they had revival. I don't know. Still messes me up. Musicians play for us, and they go to backslide. So here's what we're going to do. Before I got here tonight, I saw some individuals having trouble with a right leg and uh, stove. I'm using the word stove up, stiff. I saw a lady that had stomach issues. I saw the lady with stomach issues has a friend that has pain in her abdomen. I saw issues of the mind in several ladies that have come tonight. You think you're having mental problems, you're having spiritual issues. And so for us to go further, we need y'all to come out first and uh, if y'all would get the oil, and I want y'all to come out, and I want you people to line up first like this. 
And it doesn't make any difference if you're a member of this church. Y'all can start moving now. Or just a visitor. If you're a visitor and you're a little worried about that, then grab somebody's hand and you can come with them. Just tell them, I want you to come up there because the preachers are going to pray for me. Now, if, if you decide that I'm not the one or I'm shy, what you're really saying is this. I don't like my issue, but I am not willing to confront that issue. I'm willing to accept it. So if you want me to pray for you, I want you to come right now. Boom, two, three. We're going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. Here we go. We're moving right there. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now just line up like you, you, like you can, any way you can. That's good. Yeah, awesome. And, um, and here's why. Here's why. Awesome. So you're not crazy, okay? You're not. You're, the issue, the mind, the mind picks up. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me think how to say it. The mind picks up um, senses from its surroundings, okay? So when you surround yourself with issues, your mind it's like a sponge, and it starts soaking up those issues, and the issues that were not yours now become yours, simply because the, you allowed the brain, to, the mind, not the brain, but the mind, the soul, to soak it up. See, so now you do have the issue, but it's really not yours; it was something else's. And now because of who you run with, who's around you, who's talking, who you're listening to, who you're not listening to, things like that, now, now you've got an issue. And so tonight is the night you wring the sponge out, okay, and you say, wait a minute, I'm starting over in God. And I'm going to start listening to pastor. I'm going to start listening to preachers that know what they're talking about because everybody's got an internet. Internet's made everybody a brilliant genius, right? Now all I'm going to tell you how to get fixed, and ain't none of them fixed. Right? Awesome. I'm glad for you. I'm proud for you. Really, very, very proud for you. It's going to be a good night for you, sis. Grandma, it's going to be a good night. How much I? It's going to be a good night. You ever been around anything like this? Um, 30 years ago. Yeah. 30 years ago. See, I want you to know this is not abnormal. This is the way we address spiritual things. If you don't ever call people out to address it, Everybody can just sit there and go home with it. But see, I didn't have to call you out. You decided, I'm saying before because I believe what he's saying. All right. Now, that's an act of faith. All right. It's like, I don't even know Brother Poe, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe that he's saying. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act on my faith. Didn't even know I had this much, but bless God I do. <laughs> right? And so I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move. And I'm going to make my body obey my brain and my soul. Right? So therefore, when you do that, automatically your faith increases. Now, we don't know how much, but we do know it's an increase. Okay? Are y'all in the line up there? Okay, come on. Oh, my God, it goes all the way on. Okay, preachers, y'all go put oil on everybody real quick. One or two of you, however many, can, can get it on their finger and just put it on there. Hallelujah. I love this. I love this. In these three days, something really serious is going to happen to you. <laughs> I heard that. I know. <laughs> I just love Jesus. Do you like Jesus? Amen. Oh. We're going to pray for everybody. Just don't pray for them yet. Just put the oil on them. Just put the oil on them. Just put the oil on them. Just, just put the oil on them. That's it. Just get oil put on them. That's it. All them, make sure all them down there got it. All them. Hallelujah. Now, when a preacher prays for you, it should be something that happens. I'm so sorry we're taking so long tonight, but it, this has got to be an, a, a thing of faith, that it's not just somebody laying the hand on you and just saying a few words. It's got to be something that when he does it, he expects, and when he touches you, you expect. It's got to be like the light switch. There's always electricity. It's always ready, but it takes two 
things to make it happen, positive and negative. In the spirit realm, it takes two positives. So when the preacher lays his hand on you, you have to have that first positive reaction. He should be that pent-up energy that's just ready to shoot down into that. Because there's no place in the Bible that says, I have to touch you on the head. It said, lay hands on, right? Right. So I have to believe that I can touch you on the shoulder wherever the Lord tells me, touch you on the arm, touch you on the hand. If the Lord tells me to touch you on the cheek, and it should not matter to you where I touch you as long as it's not inappropriate, right? Okay. Then you accept that as the will of God because God told him where to place his hand, and you're receiving that electric or the Holy Ghost, right? Okay. And so we're going to pray for you. And God is going to start doing some things. This is going to be a slow build-up. It's going to be a build-up. It's going to be a, a, a Holy Ghost build Yeah, I saw both of your feet in quicksand. Both of your feet in quicksand. Standing in quicksand. You have to relieve, you have to leave that 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 pool you have to leave that pool because it's not quick it's not like walking off a cliff it's a slow process and when you when you leave it it's going to be a little sticky but when you leave it you'll realize how bad it really was when you try to survive it you can't nobody does how long have you been in the church your whole life You've been in this church your whole life? Or a church? Pentecostal church. Okay. I'm going to come back and talk to you. Because we got to let the Holy Ghost lead us. And so when we start praying, when we start praying, 30 years ago, yes. rem remembrance. Yes. Okay. So 30 years ago, you're going to start remembering. And you just let the Holy Ghost lead you into that place 30 years ago. Okay, you let the Holy Ghost lead you into this place, okay, and just say, God, I, I'm going to accept it. I'm going to receive it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe it. And it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. So y'all are going to pray first, and when it gets strong enough, we're going to turn the preachers loose. When the preachers start touching you, whatever happens right then, whatever goes through your mind, if it's to stomp your left foot, stomp it right then. If it's to scream hallelujah, stomp it. If it's to jump up and down, jump. Whatever goes through your mind, and something will go through your mind to do for him. Because there ain't no preacher going to touch you that God ain't going to give you something to do for him. So I want y'all to raise your hands, and I want y'all to start praying. God, you hear the healing sounds, Lord. You hear, God, the groans in the spirit. God, you know that there's many needs represented even right now tonight, first night. God, you hear the cries of these people. That's it. Let it go. The Holy Ghost is going to start speaking through you. Lord, I'm asking you, God, if it's the issues of a mind, to let it be done, God. If it's an issue of the body, God, heal it. God, if it's an issue, then, Lord, I'm asking you to cure it, God. I'm asking you, Lord, whatever that healing needs to be. I'm asking you, God, whatever that situation is. I'm asking you, Lord, to allow us to operate in the Holy Ghost right now, God. I'm asking you, God, to allow us to operate in the Holy Ghost. That's it, church. Come on. Everybody in the house praying. Everybody in the house praying. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. One of these days, you're going to be down here. Tonight, your faith is increasing in the house. Tonight, faith is increasing in the pew. Tonight, faith Faith is increasing across the building. Tonight, faith, that's it, that's it. You're getting there, sister. You're getting, okay, preachers, do it, do it. Pray for them, preachers. Pray for them right now. In the name of Jesus, let that go. You were there, you were there, you were there. Holy Ghost right now. Holy Ghost right now. Loose in the name of Jesus. That's it, 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 that's it. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Almighty 
God of Israel. In that blessed name, in that precious name, that's it, that's it, that's it. Anybody that wants to pray for these people, come running up behind them real quick. In the name of Jesus, in the name in the name, if you want to pray for them, come on from the crowd and get right behind them and start laying hands on their backs. In the name of Jesus, by that power, by that power, by the power of the Almighty God. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. That's it, that's it, that's it. I receive it in Jesus' name. 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 I re that's it, that's it. I receive this in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let that go. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. That's right, that's right, that's right. Let it out, let it out. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Come on, pray across the building. Praying across the building. Praying across the building in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right now, God, in the name that's above every name, right now I declare, God, healing in Jesus' name, healing in Jesus' name, healing in Jesus' name. Deliver the minds. Deliver the spirits. Come on. Deliver the spirits. Come on. Deliver the spirits. Deliver these people's spirit. In the name of Jesus, 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 we are calling upon the name. We're calling upon that name. We're calling upon that name. This house is a house of prayer. This house is a house of prayer. This house has become a house of prayer. Angels are walking in the parking lot. Angels now are walking down the aisles. People are receiving the Holy Ghost. People are praying back through. People are coming, going to leave here tonight different and changed. That's right. That's right. That's right. When you pray for somebody tonight, I want you to lay your hand on them, and I want you to declare in the name of Jesus by his stripes, they are healed. They are healed. They are healed. They are healed. That's it. That's it. Come on, that's it. I'm not turning it loose. I'm not turning it loose. I'm getting my healing tonight. Come on, pray for them one more time. Pray for somebody close to you one more time. All of you in the sanctuary, grab a hold of somebody and pray for them right now. Everybody needs to have a prayer. 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 Pray, God. Pray. Pray. I pray for spiritual guidance. I pray for spiritual release. I pray for the Holy Ghost and fire to fall upon us. I pray that bondage be loosed. Heal the sick. Heal in the name of Jesus. 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 
Oh my God, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Yes, 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 yes. It's all over this house. It's all over this house. It's all over this house. It's all over the house. The Holy Ghost is all in this place. Lay your hand on somebody again and pray God to release them. Release them, release them, release them, release them.